Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this new episode of Sotorial Talks. I'm very happy to receive you in my living room in Bourgogne, France. And for the first time in the history of Sotorial Talks, I speak to you without a jacket. But the reason why I am wearing uh, only a vest today is that we are going to speak about shirts. And I thought it was a kind of a clever idea to show a little bit more of a shirt when I'm speaking about this specific subject, because you've been asking very often, uh, Mr. Jacome, you showed us your suit collection, your shoe collection, your overcoat collection, and what about your shirt collection? Well, honestly, between you and me, if I were to show you my shirt collection, you will have to stay in front of the screen for a couple of hours, if not two, three, four hours. Why? because I probably have in my closet, I don't know exactly, but it's a few hundred shirts, probably 300 shirts, maybe 400, I don't know. But the thing is that uh, I want immediately to make clear in your mind that a shirt is something very different. It's its own animal. It's something totally different in the closet of a gentleman. Because a suit, and specifically a bespoke suit, a quality bespoke suit with a quality fabric, if you maintain it properly, if you take it back to your tailor every couple of years to be steamed, to be reshaped, um, if you um, make sure you don't wear it two times in a row to let the wool recover, normally, you, 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 if it's a good fully canvas suit, of course, if it's big, it's going to be fully canvas, but even if it's a made-to-measure full canvas suit, uh, there's big chances that you can uh, keep this suit forever, I mean for all your life, and even in my case, my uh, goal is to transmit my wardrobe to my son, because I have the luck to have a son which is pretty much my size. Same for shoes. If you properly maintain your shoes, if you put them on the woods after wearing them, if you make sure that specifically if you have to go outside with some rain, you give them time to dry and then uh, uh, just take care of them with the proper product, well, once again, you can imagine that the shoe goes a long time with you, like 10 years, 15 years, and for the best high-end shoes, a lifetime. I remember the founder of, not um, a CEO of J.M. Weston, a very famous uh, shoe company in France, used to say, you can make a whole life with three or four pairs of shoes. Well, actually, if you cut the bug of the sartorialism, I'm sure that three or four pairs of shoes will not be enough for you because it's more about a passion than an utilitarian object. But nevertheless, it's true. So, for shoes and for suits and also for overcoats, we are speaking about long-lasting elements of a wardrobe. It's slightly different for shirts. Because a shirt is something lighter, made 99% uh, of the time of cotton. Uh, of course, if you go to the high-hand bespoke maker who can change the curves and the colors for you every couple of years, you may be able to keep a shirt, let's say, 10 years. But honestly, even if you take great care of them, if you steam them the right way, if you wash them not to Heat is the enemy of shirts, you understand? So wash them with a very reasonable, um, or if, if you have somebody washing it for at very reasonable temperature, but even if you take care of them, at one moment, the cuffs first and the color will start to degrade. It's just normal. And so this is why I'm not going to show you my whole collection. But what I want to share with you is what I look for in the good shirt, the different details I look for in the good shirt, and give you a little bit of, let's say, five, six browns that I've been using through, throughout my life. Uh, of course, it's not, um, I don't have the ambition here to give you an extensive review of all the shirt making, because the shirt industry is so big. I mean, there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of different good makers around the world. And specifically now with the internet and the new economy, you can find even custom shirts pretty much everywhere. Even with Sonia, can you believe that? We are browsing the internet every day. This is our job. And we can say we discover every day a new custom uh, shirt maker from different countries. So this is it's like it's the same in suits and shoes, actually. The market is really exploding. So it's even for us, it's difficult to follow exactly what's going on. But I'm going to give you a few staples in order for you, depending on your budget, so that you can really uh, start to understand what to look 
in a good uh, shirt and what you can um, uh, afford uh, and find the best value for your money. Let's start now for a few things that you have to look for a good shirt. Well, it's quite evident. A shirt um, is not a complicated object, by the way. People who want to explain to you that a shirt has to have this kind of stitches and finesse and touch, well, of course, you can always go extremely far in everything and specifically in the fabric, but well, I would say simply use your eye and use your hand. And it's the two things that you're going to see immediately if you have a good job. Use your eyes because the fit, uh, specifically if it's ready to wear, and we're going to mainly speak about ready to wear shirt today with a little bit of bespoke at the end, but mainly ready to wear. Well, it's easy. You put on a shirt and you see immediately if it fits or it doesn't fit. Normally, the shirt maker, they always propose two sizes, regular and slim. You know, slim and then when they add darts in the back of the shirt to make it a little bit slimmer at the, um, at the waist. So that's the first thing to look because you understand, and I will repeat this on probably all my life, uh, at least until my last breath in the sartorial world, the three most important thing in anything sartorial is the fit, the fit, and the fit. The rest is can be more or less interesting. Uh, the finesse of the fabric shirting, of course, can be more, uh, more or less interesting. But if a shirt fits you, that's the first thing to, to look at. And it's the most important. And I will always uh, advise you to privilege the fit against the quality. Because if you get the most beautiful shirts, with the most beautiful mother of pearl or corn buttons or whatever, if it doesn't fit you, will be a catastrophe. On the reverse side, it's just normal cotton, not, nothing fancy, with normal buttons, not even special, you know, the way we sew the button we call Zampa di Gallina. Even if it's something normal, but it fits you, it makes the whole difference. So, it's quite easy to see if first the, the shirt fits you. And then there's a few things to look for, like the quality of the buttons. Yeah, it's true. If you have a well-fitted shirt and you have some plastic buttons, all of a sudden it downgrades the, uh, the sophistication level. So look for uh, Mother of Pearl if you can. You have different, different levels, of course, for that, but it's, it's very interesting. Then the, I would say the feeling, because um, um, a shirt is something quite special, actually, because this is one of the only thing in the sartorial world that is directly in contact with your skin. So uh, the finesse of the cotton and the cotton, sorry, and the finesse of the fabric is extremely important. I will not go into the detail for now. We'll probably dedicate another episode to the different kind of cotton, poplin, and you know, there's so many different uh, from, let's say, from poplin to Sea Island, which is uh, Haute Voile, which is the f uh, f finest of all, but not, not for today. But the touch and the, but because it's going to be in contact with your, with your skin. So it is important. So this is why I say use your eye for the feet and use your hand for the touch. So that's also one thing which is way overlooked in the sartorial community is about the color. Okay, as you know, in a shirt, you can have, you know, different kind of color. Like, even sometimes the names of the color are very imprecise. What we call French color normally is this kind of color. It's called a French color, but well, for me, it's just a long point color. And some, and then we speak about cutaway, extreme cutaway, Italian color. So one day we will we'll make the efforts to fix the real name because nobody is using the same name for a color. Nevertheless, I want to give you one trick, one thing which is very important, actually two tricks, is that uh, when you look at advertisement from big brands, I was in the plane, well, I'm often, we are many, many times per year in planes. And so, you know, we look at the in-flight magazine and who is advertising in the in-flight magazine? Uh, for example, big German brands who have my, who start with Hugo and, and, and continue with a B. And when you look at their advertisement, you see these tiny colors. This is almost ridiculous because one of the major rules about shirt makers, make sure that your color goes slightly. I don't say totally. I say slightly or as close as possible to your lapel. In the case of a vest, look, my color goes slightly and sometimes it's going out, but the proportion is right. 
I don't have a tiny color. Or if you have a special color, like um, um, an English color, uh, what we call a club color, or something like a button-down color, under button, that's a small color, then in this case, it's a, it's a decision you make, but it has to really stick to the shirt. So you understand this is major, this is very important for your elegance and the, the global picture is that when you have a point color, make sure it goes a little bit under. And don't do like this uh, Hugo B and others uh, trying to sell us this small color that really are not. And every, we see them everywhere in the street. I don't understand why people are wearing this. This is so... The proportions are off. You don't have to be a tutorialist or totally in this world to understand that this is not good proportion. And on the contrary, if you want to have smaller color, there it has make sure it really sticks to the. There's nothing more um, unesthetic than a color doing this, you know, even if it's a small color. That's one thing I wanted to add because it's important for you to understand and look for that also when you try on that shirt. You see if it fits. Put on your jacket and see if the if it fits with your jacket and if the point of the color goes slightly under the lapels. And with that, my friend, you reach a new level of elegance. Uh, before 1850, I would say the beginning of the 19th century, shirts were considered underwear. But until exactly 1838, and I will explain why 1838 is an important date in the shirt world, uh, well, the shirts were made at home by what people, what we call lingère in French. That is, uh, the women who were in charge, the maids who were in charge of the laundry of the gentlemen, specifically in England and in France. The shirts at this time were just, they were just choosing some, you know, basic fabric, most of the time white, because white was a symbol of wealth. Uh, you, you understand that. And this is also where I come, you know, people put their initials. On the, on the shirts. Do you know where it's coming from? It's not only to, to just, oh, well, now it's an aesthetic decision because some people love to have the initial. I do love to have my initial of my shirts. But back in these years, it was not to be fancy. It was just because as all the shirts were looking alike, it was just basic white shirts with no special curve. It was just straight shirt like that. It was two different shades. Uh, among the maids, which shirt it was. Was it uh, Mr. Jacome's shirt or Mr. Cosma's shirt? Or You understand? So the letters were very important just to, to notice which shirt was belonging to who. And then if you really want to go a little bit further in, in some technical thing, uh, look at how this is stitched. Uh, stitched, sorry. Um, uh, the most beautiful and sturdy shirt use what we call an English seam. Uh, actually, I think it's called a French seam. I'm, I'm always very confused with that. This is what we call a single needle seam on the body of the shirt. I explain this quickly. Uh, industrial shirts, normally they use a machine and the machine is sewing the different part of the body with a machine and, and you have two lines of stitching. And when uh, it's done with a single needle, which is still done by machine but more advanced, it creates a little bit of a um, thickness on the side, and this shirt will be much more, much more, have much more longevity than a double needle. So, what is funny is that I think we say uh, in French uh, couture anglaise, that is to say English seam, but I'm pretty sure in uh, England they call it a French seam. So, I don't know <laughs> why it's a kind of a curiosity. We speak of the same thing, but depending if you're in the UK or in France, we say it's from them and they say it's from us. Nevertheless, it's not totally uh, wrong. In, in 1838, there's a Frenchman, because everybody says, well, the capital city of the church is London and maybe the the, the, uh, the English, because, you know, Beau Brumel was a very important. Uh, the English invented the shirt. You, you can go on German Street, for example, in London. And on German Street, you have, I would say, dozens of shirt makers. So we all have the, this belief that um, the English have been inventing the shirt. For once, it's not exactly true. Because the inventor of the shirt is, has a name. He's a French person it's called Christophe. We, we used to be called Christophe Charvet. Christophe Charvet, Charvet, sorry, in 1838 exactly, decided for the first time in history to set up a shop 
in which the gentleman could come, choose in a different, you know, a choice of fabrics. For, for the first time, it was not only, you know, white linen or white cotton. Uh, choose uh, colors and patterns and have their measurement taken and have for the first time some curves, inward curves, so that the shirt became all of a sudden a piece of garment and not only an underwear which was totally cut straight and loose. So we can say that Mr. Charvet and the House of Charvet, which is totally still very alive, Place Vendôme in Paris, hello Mr. and Mrs. Colbon, uh, has been the inventor of the modern shirt making. And we have a proof for that. Can you believe that in 1869, the Prince of Wales, who will soon become Edward VII, um, gave to the Charvet uh, House what we call a royal warrant. So, a royal warrant in the UK is extremely important. It means that you are an official supplier to the crown. And with Sonia, we had the privilege to see this royal warrant, which is framed, of course, at the house of Charvet on Place Vendôme. And it's written on it to Christophe Christophe Le Charvet, chemisier in Paris. So it means the King of England was using a French word to describe a trade. Why? Because Back in these years, the only place in the world where you can order specifically shirts and nothing else and that were made for you to your measurement was in France. So the word shirt maker was not invented or was not usual in the English language. So it's a nice story. There's another nice story about Charvet. I can't resist to, to share it with you to um, give you an idea of the importance of this institution. Of course, I start directly by the top of the top. In 1965, the heirs of uh, the Charvet family were not very interested in continuing the business. And uh, we were in the mid 60s, uh, early 70s, you know, where the, the cheap ready to wear was arriving on the market, uh, you know, product from Asia, from Japan. Back in the years, Japan was uh, just up and coming and, you know, from other countries. And then all the shirt makers in Paris, a traditional one, were clothing there the one after the other. It was a kind of a artisanal catastrophe. And in 1965, um, somebody uh, called... Um, Mr. Colban, who was a silk provider for the House Charvet. And um, he said, at, um, hello, Mr. Colban, you have to buy Charvet. And I said, well, very, very nice. But first of all, who are you? And why do I have to buy Charvet? And this phone call was from um, the Ministry of Industry of General de Gaulle. Because the General de Gaulle, Charles de Gaulle, the famous Charles de Gaulle, was a client. At Charvet. And you say, as long as I'm alive, Charvet will not be sold to Americans. It will not be sold to any kind of country or investors. It has to remain French because this is part of our culture. So we can say that this house has been saved by the General de Gaulle himself in 1965. And until this day, the heir, so Mr. Colbon, did buy the company with the help of the French government and to, till this day there is still this amazing fantastic shop Place Vendôme in Paris which is even if you don't have the wallet to buy a Charvet shirt or Charvet tie please if you go to Place Vendôme just sneak in look inside this is a this, they used to call it a casbah it's absolutely splendorous you have for example at Charvet if you want to order a white shirt they come and say, yeah, but you have to choose your, your fabric. I say, well, I just want a white shirt in poplin or whatever, on twill. And they say, yeah, but you have to, 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 to choose it. And then you find yourself in front of a wall. They call it the wall of whites. They have 800 different whites. I said, what? 800 different whites? Yes, because not, a white is not two whites are exactly the same. And it depending on the, the, the texture of the fabric, so it's a little bit overwhelming. It's a fantastic place. I'll come back to Charvet a little bit later, but there was a little piece of history to tell you that this piece of garment is a very interesting one, and we have been, uh, us French, uh, instrumental in the fact to make it a staple in the uh, gentleman wardrobe. So now let's go for a few brands and a few recommendations, because so many 
people ask me where to begin, uh, which kind of brand do you recommend, at what price? Okay, well, let's start with the beginning. Uh, I started my tutorial path uh, with uh, uh, the two or three uh, English shirt maker that everybody knows, TM Lewin, I think we say like that, and Charles Tierwitt, for example. They are shirt makers, very well known. They're on German Street in London. They're extremely affordable, extremely affordable. I think most of the time you can buy three shirts for less than $100, or 100 euro, or 100 pounds, actually. So it's not the best quality. It's not the best finishing, it's not the best buttons, it's not the best cut, but the great advantage of these people, T.M. Lewin, Charles Tierwitt, and a few others uh, from this uh, German street, is that you can make your tries. You can, when you spend only less than $100 in three or four shirts, and I think during Christmas you can have like three shirts for 60 bucks, which is absolutely nothing. I mean, it's not nothing, but it's extremely affordable. It allows you to start on the right foot and say, ah, you can say that the checks are more for you than the stripes. So it allows you in real life to make tries, make mistakes and see for yourself what fits you the best uh, in terms of cut, but also what fits you the best in terms of color, in terms of patterns. And so this is what I did. I bought, I don't know, oh my gosh. 50 or 60, it was so affordable, Six, I don't know, 60 from T.M. Lewin or Charlie Witt. And I don't really, of course, uh, they didn't survive long. I mean, after two or three years, you have to throw them. It doesn't matter. It's just to make your tries and really fix what, and it's the most important in your tutorial pass. Decide for yourself what fits you the best. For the next level, there are so many. It's almost difficult for me to pick one here. I would say, for example, that uh, our friend from Spear & Mackey in Canada, they do a very, very decent show. Okay, they're made in India. India has a long-lasting tradition about shirt making, actually, even in the textile industry. But they distribute their shirts that are, in my opinion, way better quality than Tierwitt and, and Levin for 50 euros, 60 euros, Spear & Mackey. So it's a beautiful... I, I spoke about Spear & Mackey not a long time ago about their suits because they are really, really making a breakthrough with very well-cut suits. But originally, they are shirt makers and uh, their shirt, you can browse the, um, the internet, you'll see for $50, $60, you can find something very affordable and a very good quality. Of course, about between $50 and $100, there's a lot, a lot, a lot of money. So I will not risk to pick one more than another because this is the, this is the heart of the market. But I will go directly to an institution around 100, between 100 and 140, if you're American, you can't miss Brooks Brothers. Brooks Brothers is, the, is an institution, okay? Some of us may say that the, the quality is not exactly the same as it was. Well, actually, uh, Sonia has some Brooks Brothers shirts. They're always here. My um, father-in-law, uh, we offer him, he's 93 year old, uh, hello, Glenn, um, is um, every Christmas since uh, immemorial times, uh, Sonia is offering him his two or three Brooks Brothers shirts because this is a staple, specifically for button-down shirts. You know that in America it's very important this shirt was button-down. Brooks Brothers, they claim to be the inventor of the button-down. I don't know if it's true, but it's still a very good staple. It's good quality. There's a large choice. And as a major advantage, I have boutiques that you can try. And it remains something very serious. Just above around 150, I would... Uh, I uh, advise you to take a look at a French small company uh, created and led by my friend Frédéric Costa, uh, who has an English name, it's called Howards. Uh, well, I don't know why he called this Howards, because uh, he's French and originally from Italy, but uh, well, I think it's a beautiful name, Howards, from Paris. Uh, so if you type Howards.fr, you will find it. And uh, it's around 150. Frédéric Costa is a very interesting uh, man. He's uh, very well known in the French sartorial community. And he's offering, first of all, fantastic ties and, and accessories and everything you can dream of. But his specialty is shirts. His shirts are made in Italy. He has a perfect taste, a large choice, uh, probably one of the largest choice on the internet, actually. And his customer service is impeccable. Uh, the return policy is, you know, flawless. So, Howard's in Paris makes beautiful shirts, not the 
ultimate choice in terms of quality, but extremely good value for money. And I really, really invite you because the choice is so large, a lot of creation. Howard's take the time to create collection, real, actual collection, not only putting shirts on the market like that, but really design and works with Italian artisans to make beautiful shirts. For around 150 euro, it might be one of the best choice on the planet. And if we move a little bit above this at, let's say, 225, I think this is the exact price, 225, we arrive to... Uh, uh, um, what I can say, an um, iconic house of shirts, which is in England and is Turnbull and Asser. Turnbull and Asser, you can't miss them. At one moment in your life, you have to own a shirt by Turnbull and Asser. Why? Because it's a company founded in, I think it's 18, 18, 1885. So you see, we all think that there are the founders, of, Charvet was a little bit before, but in, in the same era. Turbon and Asser are, of course, they have a royal warrant. They do exquisite shirts. They are, I like their colors. They are very balanced. It's beautiful material. And they have the science of fit. And this is so important in shirt making. When you put on a turban and Asser, you don't take any risk because it's good quality. It will last. Of course, not all your life, but quite a long time, very reliable product and of a very good English taste. That is to say, discreet, extremely elegant and turbulent asser. Uh, I like, uh, I have a one or two turbulent asser specifically for my um, uh, Marcella, what we call Marcella. This is what you wear under a smoking, which is absolutely splendid. And uh, the boutique and um, the quality of the salespeople at Turnbull Answer is always also stellar. I remember one day I was in London with Sonia. We had to attend uh, the British Tailors Association dinner, which is an important dinner. And so we were invited, but nobody told us it was a black tie event. So we were a little bit panicked because uh, I came with a couple of suits and we had, I had a sport jacket from Chiffonelli that can, you know, that was looking like uh, with a trim. It could have make it as a, you know, dinner jacket, but I didn't have any bow tie. So I rushed to Turnbull and Asser and I said to the guy, please tie it for me because I have no time. I'm totally in a hurry. And so the man was sweet and he tied the bow tie and he adjusted it for me and I was ready to go. And uh, of course, my beautiful wife, uh, she had a beautiful dress and she was, uh, it was easier for, it's easier for a woman to attend a black tie even than for men because we have to, to follow extreme codes, you know, uh, the smoking, the bow tie. And so I was, as I have long hair, I was allowed to enter with a sport jacket that looked like a smoking jacket, but I had this bow tie by Turnbull and Asser. So Turnbull and Asser in shirt making is an important uh, place uh, to consider. And then we go to the top of the market, ready to wear, where you find, for example, Merol. So you know Merol, we've been um, speaking a lot about them. They are in Bologna. Uh, it's a very interesting company, uh, which uh, produces shirts in a different material. It's been t taken over by our friend Bo Young uh, three years ago, four years ago now, and uh, he's protecting this heritage. It's a, it's a beautiful thought. Now we speak here about 350 and above. I don't know if you remember, if you follow Parisian Gentleman and Sartorial Talks since a while, uh, I think it's in June 2017, if my memory is good, or 2018, no, 2017, we launched with Merol what we called the go-to white shirt. And it was a beautiful poplin by Alumo. And just to test the market and see um, how people were craving for this level of quality. So excellent poplin, beautiful shirt, cut very simply with a beautiful color. And then, uh, and I think we produced, uh, it was 45 shirts and we sold them in 13 hours. That was crazy because Immediately, people understood that it was not your usual white shirt. It was a shirt by Marol, that is to say, people who have the science of the fit, who know how to make shirts, and who are real shirt makers. And that's one thing. I take advantage of this, um, of this uh, quote of Marol. Always remember one thing. We live in an era where more and more shirt makers are making shirts, and they want to become global brands. For example, People that we like, like Boji, like a suit supply, like, and, and all of a sudden they are suit makers, but they say, but why don't we, 
also sell shirts and why also shoes and why also you know socks and accessories i would say rule of the thumb if you really want to be um you know correct in your sartorial pass and really reach for the best for your money there's a rule you buy a shirt at a shirt maker you buy your shoes at a shoemaker and you buy a suit at a suit maker don't buy a pair of shoes at a suit maker why because it's subcontract the shoes of course so you understand that shirts and suits and shoes are three different specialties and specifically shirts it's a very specific specialty once again it's very close to the body it has to be cut perfectly so that's a rule of thumb buy your shirts at a shirt maker so morale is fantastic and then we have above that charvet of course that i i spoke about just before which is probably on the top of the hill of shirt making and then after if you want to go a little bit further you can go bespoke but that's another story all by itself that is to say Turban and Asser can offer you bespoke uh, but shirt makers um, there are the new kids on the block very interesting shirt makers from England Marol is doing superlative bespoke uh, people like Davino Fiorenzo Auricchio in Naples Anna Matuozzo in Naples Alessandro Siniscalchi in Milan there's a lot of shirt makers but this is another story because we, we talk about bespoke, we talk about other uh, kind of a budget, we talk about um, something really different. But from T.M. Louvin, Charles Tierwitz, Speer and Mackey, Howards in Paris, Brooks Brothers, Tumble and Asser, Marone and Charvet, uh, if you follow these guidelines, you will not go wrong. Of course, there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of others that you can go for. But remember one thing, use mainly I, it, it doesn't, it's not about your wallet, it's about your eye, it's about your hand. Buy something that fits you and buy something that you love and buy something that you feel good with because it's going to be in contact because you know that unlike American, us European, we wear the shirts directly on the skin. We don't put any t-shirt under, which is... I still don't understand why they do this and everybody's laughing at me when I say that but I don't understand why Amer in America most of the people they even show the t-shirt with their open uh, shirt and for me this is <sighs> okay I love you anyway American people but it's strange for us because for us a shirt is directly on the skin I hope this was inspiring for you I will, I hope you have good information as usual don't hesitate to ask in the comment section below any question you want to know, any brand that you use, if you want to have our opinion on it. We don't know all of them, far from it, but maybe we can still continue to help you find the best value for your money. And uh, thank you again for your participation. And I give you an appointment for the next episode of our tutorial talks. Cheers. Thank you.